Hello, my name is Matt and welcome back to another video. I don't think we're in Manchester anymore. No. We've driven a long, long way. Well, it's a long way for us. You'll say it isn't a long way, but it's a long way. I think we're in the North Pennines. I'll show you on the map where we are. But we're on the railway trail or we're on the trail of old bridges. Do you remember the Bilar Viaduct? This very much reminds me of the Bilar Viaduct, this video. We've come to look at or we're trekking after the Gornless Viaduct. Hmm. So, not sure where it is. We've got to walk along the Gornless River. Every time I say that, it's like, think look at you. I think of you. I think of you. <laughs> <laughs> Named after James. The Gornless River. No, not the Gornless River. The Gornless River. Anyway, we're in the countryside. We're trying to find the remains of an old viaduct. So let's crack on. We've got Liam here. Where's Liam? And we've got Roy here. Lead on, Macduff. Sorted. Let's go. Okay, so where are we this week? Well, we've headed north in search of the Gornless Viaduct. County Durham, not far from Bishop Auckland. And you can see here, we're not far from the village of Cockfield. And as we zoom in further and further, we can see there the, the scars on the landscape of industry. And you can see there, Gornless Viaduct, the site of. And that's what we're headed towards. Oh, we're going to drop down the valley now to the River Gornless. <laughs> Named after James? <laughs> Not after you. Not Gormless. <laughs> Gormless. <laughs> yes, so we think we're on the right road. So as always with these expeditions, when the City Boys come out of Manchester, we're not quite sure what we're doing. But however, we have employed uh, um, Ordnance Survey map app and it tells you where the footpaths are. So we think we're on a public footpath even though we're in the middle of a field. You know where you're going, Gandalf? Yeah. With your rod and your staff, you know where you're going. Yeah. You, you do. Point the way then. This way. Right that way. Yeah. <laughs> There's a horse Ooh, over there. We just that. had to bring him back in off private land because he was going to. It was uh, like a dog worrying the sheep. <laughs> More like bothering the sheep. Yeah. Just walking along here now, and suddenly from nowhere has come this. Uh, was that a railway line? Has come this drop. <laughs> Something there, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what? Very much looks like a like a disused railway line that, doesn't it? It's got the perfect, yeah. uh, Although it's a bit inclined, isn't it? Only if it was a tramway. Unless they use it when they constructed it, because mm. there's a thing down well, there. Well, there's somewhere down there, that black yeah. stone feature. Unfortunately, there. rubbish down there. Look behind that cow, what's that? Yeah. That's like... Okay, so what exactly have we found here? There it is, there's the scar on the land. And obviously, you can tell by the looks of it, it looks railway related. But of course, this is where our amateurism comes in here really now and, and my approach as a, as a lay person really. We think we're walking in a, a rural setting, but all around as you can see are the scars of industry. And as I roll back time and we look at the old maps, and this one is 1892 to 1914, you can see. And all I can say is, wow, wow. You know, my naivety shines through. Everywhere you look, tramway, tramway, old quarry, old quarry, old shaft, old shaft, old shaft. And of course, this is County Durham. This is coal mining territory. Well, obviously, in this case, it's coal mining and quarries. And this is what we found, this tramway here, or the remains of. Looks like it fed the quarries. Took a sharp left here down the valley over here to the this branch line here, which was known as the Hagalises branch. I was absolutely blown away when I saw this. I found a photograph that demonstrates what it was like because it was a rural area, but dotted and punctuated with industry everywhere. I'm going to show you a picture in a bit, and it's from Cockfield here, and it's looking over towards the Gordon House Colliery. I'm going to show you that picture in a bit, which sort of illustrates how the land would have been or how it was. As we walk further towards the River Gornless, we're about to find this, where it says here, tunnel. Well, I'm going to suggest to you that this is no longer a tunnel. This was probably a cut and cover. So as we crack on and we go on our journey down here towards the Gornless, um, let's take a look at this now. Right, so just up from the valley from the Gornless Viaduct, look at this here. That's got to have been a bit of a tramway, hasn't it? It must be, I'm thinking. Stone lines, and if you turn around, I'm still on a bit of a bridge here. And then there's another one there, look. It goes all the way down the valley there. So if we go down here, you see, in the middle of it, uh, ooh, 
a bit wet. But look at this, obviously man-made for some reason, isn't it? That's not... So we're not sure. Well, that, that a bit of, uh, sensor, wouldn't it? Uh, rail, yeah. It's not very uh, rail is it? But it's it's possibly tramway. Summer, anyway. Yeah. Set into the, uh, the stone there. Bit of coal there. And there you go, that's the picture I wanted to show you, taken from a small street in the village of Cockfield. Uh, as you look through the gap in the stone cottages and the local church, an ever-present reminder of industry, all dotted around. So it probably was rural and it was villages, but industry surrounded it. And everywhere you looked on the horizon was the reminder of work, industry, and going back to work on Monday morning uh, if, you, if you worked in the collieries or the quarries or on the tramways. So here we found it, the Gornless Viaduct, or the Lands Viaduct as it's otherwise known. Designed and built by Thomas Bouch, or Booch, he's the one that did the, uh, the Beeline Viaduct as well, and the ill-fated Tay Bridge up in Scotland. Okay, so the journey continues and we've walked down here and probably followed this old footpath and crossed the river about here. So unbeknown to us, there was this railway yard here and as we cross the river and we start to approach the Gornless Viaduct uh, or what remains of it, we're actually walking and we didn't know in an old railway yard, which just as I look at this after the event, I didn't look at this before we went. As I look at this now, I'm completely and utterly blown away by the amount of industry here. And this is the line we're going to look at. So now, as we approach along here, let's take a look at what remains of the, uh, the Gornless Viaduct. So, what do we know about the viaduct? Well, we know it was Thomas Bouch. I never know whether to say Bouch or Booch. Anyway, Thomas Bouch designed the viaduct in 1862. And it was built as four lattice truss spans supported on a diagonally staggered pair, uh, paired circular brick piers. Designed 1862, it opened on the 1st of August 1863 at a cost of £15,422. It was 161 feet high with a total span of 640 feet now the viaduct was built initially for a, a double track, but it was only a single track initially that was laid. This, um, it was later um, converted to double track in 1899. Anyway, we're going to have a brew, hope you don't mind. Um, I believe we've not got a flask this, this week. We're not, we've got a cooker. Stove. Cooker. Whatever. Cooker. Join us. <laughs> we're almost abroad. We've we'll pushed the boat out, haven't we? Cooking we'll, on gas. We've got, we're cooking on gas. James, what have you brought? Biscuits. Biscuits? And biscuits and a brew. I wanted luxury items. I know, well, you can't always have luxury. <laughs> we've got brown sugar. We've got brown sugar. Oh, healthy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Eat your regular, bit of brown sugar. <laughs> Uh, hang on, you said around. you didn't want them. Yeah, well. You said we had to be different this week. You did, you did actually, I remember that. Be nice. Right, so in the interest of being different, I've got a mini roll. I, I, I brought. Available at Aldi. Because <laughs> <laughs> you made me buy the cheap ones. You're having. I've got this. Uh, what are you having? Have. You've got biscuits. I brought my own you? biscuits. Yeah. Now, head of logistics, who shall remain nameless, Roy, 
Um, Mister, I've got a camping gas stove we can use. Um, who didn't check how much gas was in it, uh, brought along his camping gas stove. And guess what? The gas ran out, resulting in a brew that had been warmed to about 20 degrees. It's brew for warm. <laughs> it's nice to have a hot cup, isn't it, on, the, <laughs> on a cold day, isn't it? You ran out of gas boiling the water. Two world wars my grandma got through and never ran out of gas. I had one job and one job only. <laughs> yeah. Well, that and the drum. Yeah, hey, what would you say? Be right. So by the side of the pillars, I think we found like a drainage um, channel. It was warm, that brew, wasn't it, Martin? Yeah. There's nothing quite like having a brew. <laughs> right, start again. <laughs> right, you've got to put it in. Right, right. I'll try to go off. Come in your mouth. Mm. Mm. Oh, is it in? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Just say it. It's funny uh, outside. There's nothing quite like having a brew in the countryside next to a turd. <laughs> Come into the turd. <laughs> okay, so this is a website called Railmap Online. It's very good, very useful resource. And I just started use it to show, show the um, where the, the our railway line ran from. It was between Barnard Castle there up to Bishop Auckland, and it's this line here. Um, just incidentally, if I click on, you can there's layers on it. So if I click on historic railways, if I click the button to take them off, look at that. All those railways have gone, just gone. And then when I click on historic railways, they uh, they come back there. Look, all those lines have uh, have gone completely. Anyway, let's just zoom in to the area of Cockfield, which is where we are. Right there, you go. There's um, Cockfield Village, and there's our line there. Gornless Viaduct site of, there you go, and the River Gornless there. So if I click on there, it'll tell us what the line was. There you go, Barnard Castle to Shildon line. So that's what the actual line was. And then if I zoom in even more, that's where we walked. And we had a brew about here. And we were actually on this 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 branch line here, where there were sidings and everything. And that was called... Um, the Hagalises branch, which we knew I'd, I'd mentioned that already. But amazingly, when we walked up there and we had the brew, I never realised we were actually sat on an old railway track there. So that's incredible, isn't it? Um, River Gondolus there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to zoom back out. I'm going to click the button that shows the um, industrial tramways. So if I click on this now, watch this. Look at that. All those light blue lines there. They're all the industrial tramways. And at the start of this video, we found this one here, didn't we? Which is in the big cutting. And we found this one here, which we thought had been a tunnel. Well, it was a tunnel and then we thought it was cut and cover and they took the top off it. But look at all these industrial tramways here. Absolutely incredible, isn't it? Anyway, that was Railmap Online. Uh, let's crack on now. Now, while we're here, we want to explore all of what's left of the viaduct. So first off, we're going to take a look at that right-hand abutment there that's hidden in the trees. Uh, but unfortunately, to get up there, it's quite a bit of a, a bit of a steep bank we have to uh, scale. Whose idea was this? <laughs> uh, quite a, a walk up there, wasn't it? This would have been the approach, obviously, to the uh, viaduct. And uh, it's 1963, so it probably would have seen. He could have seen diesel, but it probably would have been predominantly steam. Uh, come thundering along this way, obviously, and then bang, and over the viaduct. Yeah, don't like heights. Might have to do a sit down bum crawl around here. As long as there's no cracks up here. <laughs> I've had a cracking time so far. Oh yeah. I'm going to film you. Yep. Yeah. 
Is that a camera on there as well? You know what? I think it's a... No, it's not. No. Yeah. Someone's left there. It's been there a while, that, yeah. So if you look at the land there, there's all sorts of spoil heaps there. There's been a lot of activity and the land's scarred there. But uh, interesting stuff that, look at all that. There's been a lot of work going on here, haven't there, in the past. Now, remember when I said the viaduct was initially built to take a double track, but initially, in its early years, it was only a single track viaduct. Well, in 1899, they decided to go up and try and lay that second track. So, in 1899, just what, 30 years, not just over 30 years after it had been uh, built, the engineers and the builders got up there and started to take a look at the structure of the viaduct and realised that um, the steelwork had decayed so badly that it had to be replaced. And the operation took six years at a cost of £9,858. And these pictures with the, um, the scaffolding at the side of it, I believe are from 1899, that era when they were doing that uh, remedial work. Right, anything to say before you uh, pass through this small hole? Um, I love cakes. Come on, Sluggy. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> <laughs> the face at a thousand chips. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like my ass is going to be in this. <laughs> so we're going to the other side of the valley now oh, yeah. to look at that side up there. The other abutment up there, see it? Perfect. Um, and the big piers are still there but they're different so when we get over there I'll show them you so here we are at the other side now as early as 1924, industry in the area started to go into decline. That decline was a long, drawn-out, protracted process, but one by one the collieries closed and the coke implants with them. This obviously had an effect on the railway lines in the area, and freight services declined and the passenger services were also cut. This had the usual predictable effect on the line and eventually it closed. In 1964, a kind of a half assed attempt was made to um, demolish the viaduct. They dismantled all the steelwork on top and they used dynamite to dynamite some of the piers, the, the, the columns. I think after the dynamited a couple of them, they took a look and thought, how on earth are we going to shift all this brickwork out of this rural area? And so they just left them where they fell. And all the better for us because now we've got the memory of this, the gauntless viaduct or the parts of it that remain. And we can look in awe and wonder of what used to be. Quite a nice cross section there, and it's interesting to see how they laid the bricks out and built the columns. E, is that ES? Hard to tell, isn't it? It's interesting to see how they constructed it as well. And there, there's a full one, it says peas, yeah, peas. There, look at that. Peas. Yeah. God knows how that's fell there. Let's okay. have a look at the under, underside first. Somebody they've cool. attempted to fence it all off, haven't they? But, uh, if we go down here, all the top part there, and then you've got the uh, the big plate there where the metal work would have bolted on for the thingy for the railway. Look at that! Wow. Okay, finally, let's take a look at the uh, this last abutment. See what's going on up there. Right, so you can see things are not in a good way here. 
the whole thing's really cracked and it's probably working its way down the valley you know sliding down the valley look at that there yeah. massive crack there it's the actual bricks that have cracked forgive me being out of breath I just ran up the embankment look at that there proper going out in it look at that one there that's gone look at that they have tried I think to keep people away you can see but obviously it's too interesting really to uh, not come up here and take a look although you've got to be uh, relatively mobile and there's the track bed oh, running onwards there Liam's already got this. Throws your hat. Don't watch me. Beautiful for the view. Look at that. The view is absolutely fantastic. It really is. Especially if you just, like I said before, if you just sit and remember what was over here at one point. Yeah. You know what gets me the most about these railway lines that they built back in the Victorian times? They sort of like must have looked at it on the map and just drew a line and went, well, we'll go this way, we'll go that way. When they actually did the survey, they were faced with this valley. And it's like, right, what do we do now? And so the labour involved in, the, uh, in building these viaducts and just the embankments alone, I mean, we talk about the structures, the bridges and viaducts, the embankments alone are, are immense. There's one near me where I live and I sometimes look at it and I think wheelbarrows and wheelbarrows and wheelbarrows of just earth and stone just to build this thing up and they last forever. Anyway, so from the gauntless viaduct, gauntless, sorry, gauntless viaduct <laughs> and what remains of it and the river gauntless and the gauntless valley. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care. We'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. See you in a bit.